Hmm. But level. Is that better? Yeah. 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 Okay. Now you're Which loud. One? Yeah, now there's like static and stuff too. <laughs> it's like noise. <laughs> the other microphone was cleaner, but it's just softer. It, yeah, this is like without the headphones. Is this better now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Could live with that. Now it sounds a lot better, actually. Okay, great. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sorry. We just went live. Um, oh, there's a new YouTube set up here and I'm like, where is the go live button? But apparently we went live. So, hey everybody and welcome to Chew Stream, where we talk about art and life as an artist. I'm your host, Bobby Chew, and today we have a couple of my good, good buddies here. Boom. What's up? Co-creators of Nico and Sword of Light. We got Adam Jeffcoat. We got Jim Bryson. Hey, uh, hey guys, how's it going? Very good, very good. <clears throat> we are, of course, missing one more in the original creators of Nico and Sword of Light, the, the comic book app, uh, which is Kay. But Kay had a really late night. And she's been working super hard, so we're going to give her her uh, very deserved rest. Oh, yeah. Kay's always working hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now... Adam, I'm so glad that we could get you onto this stream. Uh, happy belated birthday. Can we give Adam a happy belated birthday in the chat? <laughs> Muchos gracias. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, um, because, of course, Jim and I, we live pretty much down the street from each other, um, comparatively. Uh, I got. What's that? Compared to England, yeah. Yeah, totally. That's what I mean. Um, so I, so I got Jim to spend some time with me and do a sketch, and that's what you're looking at now, uh, Adam. This is yeah, actually so Jim is drawing it, and you can see that as he's drawing it, somebody else is painting it. So I'm that. painting it at the exact same time. <laughs> We won't get oh, into exactly what this is uh, until all will be revealed at Lightbox Expo yeah. happening September 11th to 13th. Damn. But um, Top secret technology here. This is very... Uh... It'll be fun. It's going to be so much fun. And we'll be able it to do collaborations the world has never seen before. Like, I've never been able to <clears throat> paint and draw with uh, Jim before. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so what should we talk? You know, wow. I just had this awesome idea, awesome shitty idea. <laughs> Look at this lighting. It looks like I have pectoral muscles, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that, I thought you set it up like that on purpose. To no, <laughs> no, that's, what if you design shirts that had a crease in the middle? <laughs> that's my shitty like, idea. Bobby, yeah, you're yeah. looking ripped today, man. <laughs> I know, right? Like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, anyhow. They should, they should have Zoom foreground so that you just fix this. Oh, yeah, yeah. A, a, <laughs> like a green screen for your face and yeah. body. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be Pick sweet. That part. You know what? That makes total sense. You know, like those Instagram filters and such? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? The buff filter. Like an Instagram filter for Zoom? Yeah, for like your instead video of like a cartoon rabbit face, you get like a, you know, like a supermodel face. That would be so funny. That would be so that funny. Be <laughs> we don't need that, right? We're, 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 we're all like, uh, su we're all supermodels anyway. Yeah, it's a good thing we're there you go. super hot. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what should we talk about here? The Emmys, the Emmys well, passed not too long ago. We were nominated yeah. for, for, or Nico and Sora Light was nominated for the best um, in children's programming for 2020, yeah. right? Yeah. We didn't yeah. win. Unfortunately, everybody wondering, oh, do you guys win? No, we didn't win. 
Well, we, we, we lost to some really good competition. We actually lost to the Dragon Prince, uh, yeah. which, you know, the guys who made Avatar. So, Amazing. you know, that's not a bad thing. Those, those guys are awesome. So, um, Also, you know, we, we won for season one. We're nominated for season two. You know, there's no shame in that. That's for sure. Yeah, actually, when I when I actually went back and looked, we we'd been nominated for eleven times from for Nico from the Emmys and the Annies, so, and won won once. So that's actually a pretty good achievement. Now the look of surprise <laughs> on our faces, on Jim's totally blank face and my totally blank face, is the fact that we didn't know. You know, like <laughs> it's funny because like none of us went to the first Emmys. Yeah, and then yeah. the second Emmys, again, none of us showed up virtually. No. None no. of us. So when I was watching the Emmys like afterwards, I was like, oh yeah, I wonder who showed up to, to represent us to be that little square for the nominated people. We were the only people that didn't show up. None of us showed up to a virtual oh. event. Oh, yeah, know. you gotta be real I, lame to not show up to a virtual event. You know, it's like, what are your excuses there? Yeah, Actually, oh, I'm no, filming a movie over here. Yeah. I can't go over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a shame. I, I assume Titmouse would be there, but maybe they were. They, they maybe they didn't know because me and Jim didn't know about it. I didn't really. Yeah, I didn't really even remember when it was, because I've just been uh, so. Well, and obviously this is, you know, it's super important to us and we're absolutely flabbergasted that we were nominated again, our show was nominated mm -hmm. again and everything. And, um, but it's just, I guess we're just like that. <laughs> we it's just crazy don't times, think man. about these things and we just keep going and doing our own thing. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy times. But um, yeah, well, next time we'll, we'll definitely be there virtually. Let's, let's make a pact. Virtually, the yes. <laughs> There's no excuses not to show up uh, the next time we get. for a virtual one. Who knows when the next time is that we'll show up yeah. as well. That's so funny. So anything new? Anything like I haven't actually talked with all you guys, like both you guys for a while. We had a little bit of a talk about just like Lightbox Expo, but um, yeah, it's sunny, exciting. I mean, yeah, I've, I've just re literally finished putting together the um, the app. Um, yes. <laughs> Boom. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I got to put in a little trailer, but keep going. Oh, yeah, you got the trailer as well. Nice. Well, yeah, um, let yes. everybody know about the app. Totally. So basically, like, yeah, so, so for all those who don't know, so we, we actually released the, the this whole journey started out with an animated comic book, right? So um, Bobby pitched us this idea back in 2013, 2012, I think, um, when the iPad first came out and was like, man, you know, this with this iPad, we could bring our comic books to life. So that's how Nico essentially was born and um, it took us two years to put together this app. But at the time, um, we literally designed it for uh, iPads because it fitted that, that, you know, that big screen perfectly. It was kind of like a comic book size anyway. And um, then, you know, the show ended up getting picked up by um, uh, Amazon. And, you know, we kind of then moved on to working on the series. And we never, we never really thought too much about it. But a lot of people were like, we never actually got to watch that because, you know, we never had an iPad. So, you know, we, we saw all you guys posting all this cool artwork, but no one actually got to actually enjoy the, uh, the comic. So I suddenly realized I could take all the, the you know, the old footage we had upgrade it to HD and actually re-release it for phones. Um, so we spent the last, I think like six months basically putting that together um, with, a, with a program over here. And we are basically going live today. So that's one of the things we wanted to announce to everyone. And it's free. <laughs> and it's free. Yeah, uh, details in the description of the video. Download it, please, and give us a good rating. Let everybody know this is a free app. This is also, you know, part of it being free is everybody's cooped up inside. They got nothing to do. We hope to put a bunch of smiles on people's faces. So please spread the word. This is a free app out there. Okay. And uh, let's play a little trailer, shall we? Awesome.
Tell me, how do you plan to defeat the darkness, Nico? Oh, it's not coming soon. It's already out. It's, it's already, already out. out. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. must have played a uh, earlier well, it, <laughs> version. Yeah, of it's, that. A, it's it's basically available on the App Store. So anyone who has um, iPhone or you know um, app, you know Apple tablets, you can go and find that right now and follow that link. And uh, yeah, like download it for free and, and let us know what you think. Yeah, and hopefully it will it also inspire some people out there to you know go and create their own content too. Cause this was yeah. really, this is made with a bunch of people that have, that really didn't have very many resources, right? Like anybody can make an app, anybody can make an iBook, whatever, and put it out there. Yeah, actually that even I was gonna mention, so the, the program that the coder that I work with, he's another guy called Adam uh, over here in the UK. And he, the program he used to put that together with, he actually is, is thinking about releasing that for free as well. So then people can basically take that software and make their own animated comic and get it out onto phones and tablets, which wow. would be super cool. Yeah. So yeah, if this app does well, then we can we can uh, we can get him to, to work on that next. Well, yeah, let me know and I'll share about it. Um, also, yeah. just before we get a little too far, I know. A lot of people must have questions, and I want to give everybody the opportunity to ask uh, any questions, especially about pitching, about you know creating your own show, things like that. I don't usually talk that much about those things um, in my streams. They're usually about painting and such. But you can go to slido.com, hashtag choose stream, ask your questions there. You can also vote up questions, whatever you like to do, and then we'll answer as many as we can. All right. So uh, you were, this is totally kind of like off topic and, and we don't have to get into it, but it is kind of topical for the times. Um, you were gonna get married uh, in October, right Adam? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, so originally we had a date book booked for um, May, uh, May of this year. And we were kind of, you know, I think probably when things started to hit the fan back in January, we started to think more, oh, this, is this going to happen? Because, you know, people were starting to get pretty uh, crazy and, and talking about, um, you know, having to, to lock down. So we had to make a decision, basically, we're going to postpone the wedding, um, me and my fiance. And um, once we did, we actually, uh, the venue was super cool about it. They were like, obviously, you know, this is probably not going to be able to happen. So, so you, you can totally move it. So we moved it till October, but then we were like, is it going to happen in October? I don't know. So we've actually now moved it till next spring just to try and I say be safe, but you know, at least safer than it, than it was. So, um, yeah, it's just one of those things, man, you know, it, it brings up a, an interesting sort of mindset, I guess I've adopted in the last six months, which is you just got to flow with life sometimes because you can't predict what's going to happen. And this is an amazing example of no one, apart from maybe Bill Gates, could predict that COVID was coming and was going to have such an impact on everything, right? But all of us got a bit freaked out for the first couple of weeks. And then you kind of, you know, you realize the human mind can adapt to this stuff and you can kind of figure out how to make it work. And some people are obviously more affected than others. But, you know, even when it comes to having to move our wedding, it sucked, but yet, it, it is what it is and we you know we just kind of adapted to it and um and now it just feels like it's just we have more time to plan we've, we've got more time to, to save up and make it awesome an awesome party you know why i think this happened to you at this time it's just because you're going to have an awesome marriage and an awesome you know life together that's yeah kind of like um i don't know if you ever heard of that superstition where it's like thunderstorm during your wedding is like mm. a good sign of uh strong happy marriage after i don't know if you've heard that but i've heard of we, that we know you know what's crazy is the day that our wedding would have been was 
like not a cloud in the sky, like 26 degrees, <sighs> which in the UK is, is pretty rare. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that would have mean, I mean, we were going to have a bad marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? See you like yeah. that. <laughs> well, okay. and, and the other thing is, it's like, you remember when we were making this app? You see how I'm going to segue this back into the app. But um, yeah. when we we're making the app, we had a lot of discussions, a lot of talks about, okay, things are going well now, but bumps are coming. Most likely bumps will be coming. And when they do, when we hit those roadblocks, when we hit those impediments, the key is to stay positive, right? Yeah. And that will change everything. And we will succeed because of that. Um, it's just life's test because this app is going to be awesome. And then we did hit a whole bunch of impediments, right? When the app first came out, uh, after spending, you know, over two years on and off on it, like our spare time, it didn't do well. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. It actually I, didn't do well. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It's like you just entered a sea of other apps and, and it just kind of, you know, it's a weird thing about doing something like this. You think, you, you know, just because you spent a lot of time working on it, it's going to like, all of a sudden people are going to be like, oh, well, great job. But, you know, it's hard to get people to look at stuff. Yeah. It's, yeah, exactly. It's like, look at my raindrop. <laughs> it's like pouring yeah. rain. No, no, look at my raindrop. Did yeah. you see it? It was awesome. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Uh, yeah. And also, I remember when, when that happened, I was like, getting ready to give my little pep talk to y'all and being like, okay, this is the, this is the thing I was talking about. We got to stay positive. And then you guys were just like, this just means good things are going to happen. All right. I'm going to hit up this. I'm going to hit up this. I'm going to go to this blog. I'm going to, you know, contact this person. And it was like, everybody was on the same wavelength and just went super positive, worked even harder. And then like, then everything blew up right after. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because I think like one of the things that the reasons why it happened like that is because we were all so passionate and enthusiastic about working together, on, you know, on, on this project that we felt was so cool that that kind of like created energy, even if the app didn't necessarily bring success. It was like we still enjoyed and loved working on it, even though it wasn't making, you know, the million dollars that we maybe hoped. Um, it was genuine. It was, <laughs> it was genuine. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was it was a genuine love for something, and I think and when whenever we you know me and Jim have done a few uh, talks about pitching and making content since then, and exactly what you said, Bobby, that's come up a lot. Like it's you 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 have to find a project that you're genuinely passionate about because that's how you get through those stormy days. That's how you get through those those tough times when either you know it doesn't it doesn't you know make a, a big enough splash that you hope or um or also you're just overwhelmed by the amount of work right you and also have... you know you know something like this is like you put something you put all this work into something and you truly believe in it like we all believed in this thing and it came out and it was different than anything that was out there and it's like when you're when you're pitching ideas for shows and stuff what you have in your head is something different and it's unique and you believe in it but it's trying to convince someone that you know what you're telling them is going to be unique and different but anytime well i mean a lot of times when you pitch an idea they will think oh that's like this or that's like that you know because they can't see what's in your head right so it's like that's that's the sort of good thing about actually making something that you know this is what it is and you can you can watch it and you can see how it's different and you can like it or not like it or whatever but it it's out there and it's like um that's kind of like you know i think why it's so important to actually finish a project and not just sort of try and get people to fund an idea so we've done both versions like all three of us have done versions where it's like we create a pitch internally try to sell it right mm -hmm. Maybe it gets sold, maybe it doesn't. And then this version, we make something, we put it out there, let the world choose, and then that attracted people to us to create the, the show. Mm -hmm. What do you yeah, think exactly. is the right way? Um, what? And, or that's a weird question because it's all, that's binary. You know, it's like, which one's the right way? Maybe it's like thoughts on both ways. Yeah, so I mean, we, we, 
We actually did a, a talk about that at Lightbox last year, um, and, we, and we also invited uh, Rob Hoagie, who was the head writer and showrunner on the Nico series, because for that exact reason, because that was our experience um, of, of getting a show, was was making this app, which actually then got the attention of Amazon Studios, and they were just pure, you know, fortunate timing. They were looking for content for their pilot season. Um, and they they picked up Nico and, and and put it into that, and then you know we got a show out of it. Whereas Rob had been a kind of a veteran of the industry, and he had literally sold the show with an, a, a bit of you know an idea written on the back of a napkin. He famously told the story. Really, um, I didn't I didn't hear the story. Yeah, yeah, like because so, he was he's a salesman, right? Like he, he's a, he's a writer, but he's able he's got that gift of, of selling, and and he was able to go into a room and just paint this you know this vision just with words and and, and convince these people um you know of, of his idea and um you know with with ex the experience and the pedigree he had you know they, they were into it so it was great to have the two sides there because from me and jim had actually like you say bobby and you and you guys as well had been pitching for several years before we made nico and had come against those issues where we would leave the meeting and we just knew that the people that we had pitched to weren't seeing in their imagination the way the way we were seeing our ideas. So then we were like, man, if we're going to make pilots, which are obviously incredibly expensive and time consuming. Um, and in a way, Nico kind of served as one, as a pilot, right? Like it, totally it, is. It, 22 yeah. minutes of animation. 22 minutes, yeah, which was your, your brainchild uh, idea, right? You were like, let's make it like the same length as a, sh a show. And then when Amazon picked it up, it was like an easy sell. Yeah, for those of you out there, our idea was really, let's put together a 22 minute animation and show it as an animated comic book, which is different. And then let the producers piece it together and go, hmm, I have a brilliant idea. This could be a show. It doesn't have to be just an animated comic book. You know, and that was like, the best thing is if it's somebody else's idea. Right. If it's yeah. their idea and they start championing, championing it as opposed to you spoon feeding them and going, here's a good idea for a show. Yeah. Right. When they came up with it, then they're going to be a lot more behind it. hundred percent. Yeah. And the, the best pitches we've ever had have been ones where the exec has actually got involved and has started like vibing with us on the idea because they take, they took some ownership and they started kind of suggesting, you know, oh, would it, would it be cool if, if the character did this and, and you're like, okay, you can tell this guy's invested because he's actually, you know, vibing off, off the idea with us. Whereas when they sit back and they don't say a word for half an hour and just let you talk, you, you, you kind of get the sense they're not <laughs> into it. The, yeah, the other thing yeah. I wanted to mention is like uh, that a lot of people probably don't think about is the person that you are pitching to. Is that the person? Is that the meeting that's going to say yes or no? No, it's not. It's going to be another meeting and then you're not there to pitch it, mm -hmm. right? So it's like this horrible game of broken telephone, except it isn't a little phrase that you're saying. You're saying like minutes of a presentation and then the other person has to go into the bigger meeting where they're looking at all of the content, talking about all of them. What's this one about? What's this one about? What's Nico and Sora Light about? It's about a little kid with a sword. It flashes in the dark. You know, it's like, pass. you know, like those, I'm sure those kind of things happen all the time, right? Like Game of Thrones was almost canceled. Yeah. You heard about that. Like in the very beginning, mm -hmm. they were looking at yeah, this like, yeah. what is this? This is yeah. bonkers. It doesn't make sense or something like that, right? Yeah. So there's that whole entire aspect too. And it's like, how do we get our pitch across in a way where they will remember it? It's like Lightbox Expo. What's that? It's the place you go to meet the artists and creatives behind your favorite things, movies, e-games. You know, it's distilled into one kind of yeah. thing. And with Nico, it was kind of like distilled into this whole thing where it's like, you know, this little boy is destined to do great things when he grows up. Mm. But something happens and he has to do it now. He has to save the world now but he's only yeah. 10. That yeah. was it. That was it, exactly. It, that was so intriguing, right? The, the thing about, you know, the difference between, say, pitching and 
you know, the fact that we went through the process of actually making the thing is that, you know, a lot of the things that probably made them decide to make the show were things that we discovered way, way later, you know, in the process, like things that we didn't even know back in the stage when we would have been pitching it. So had we pitched the show, we probably would have gone in and they would have said, oh, no, we have this other show we're doing where there's like a kid with monsters. So sorry, guys, we're not doing that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so what kind of like what kind of stuff in hindsight, what kind of stuff did we not know? Like OK, so there, w there was this sort of, uh, you know, theme about um, uh, something, you know, kind of towards the end where it was it was about like him finding his inner um, strength and, and, you know, not just a kid that goes out and, you know, take, defeats monsters or whatever. And it was it was sort of like, in, you know, believing in yourself and all these kind of like, you know, things that like, w you know, we didn't, we didn't sort of discover those like, um, no deeper character traits until much later in the process, you know, in the beginning, it was like, Oh, let's, this would be a cool monster. That would be a cool monster. Like, you know, he could go here or there and it'd be like different cool things he could do. You know, it's, it's, you know, in the beginning, it's very, you know, simple and you kind of, as you go through, you're like, well, man, what about this? Well, you know, how would he think, what would he think about this? You know, you start to get to know the characters. And I think it, it, part of the thing with uh, doing pitches is it's very difficult to uh, get really deep into the characters until you've, you've almost like put them in scenarios and like seen like what they might do or how they might react to certain things. Well, that's definitely one of the huge pluses of having somebody like uh, Rob Hoagie on there. You know, he really yeah. thought all that stuff out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he, he basically took <clears throat> what was a, a relatively simple idea of, of the original app that we came up with, because it was kind of, it was the equivalent content of a small graphic novel, I think. It was 55 pages. So he basically took that story um, and expanded it into the whole, you know, universe with like bad guys and, and the princess Lyra to guide him and all these sidekicks and, um, you know, different hierarchies of, of, of evil going all the way up to Lord Narest, who was kind of representing, and then even above him was like this dark force that was kind of controlling him. So, um, yeah, that's exactly it. That's where, where a, a experienced screenwriter can come in and, you know, take what we had, which which was relatively simple, like Jim's saying, and then just kind of expand it into something that would, would fill, you know, two seasons worth. Yeah, and uh, of course, Rob, he's going to be at Lightbox Expo, so you could come see him there. You guys are going to be doing something together with him. Hopefully, I can join in. Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty be fun. fun. We'll release some details about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and Lightbox Expo tickets, registration, happens starts on august 24th so get ready everybody now we have a bunch of questions i'd love to get to some of these questions of course if you have questions if you have your own questions and you want us to you know answer them live on the stream you could go to slido.com hashtag choose stream you don't have to log in you could just write your question anonymous or you can you know write your name and i'll say oh this is kells so i'll go to kells first and kells says uh, in a world of anime or Instagram portfolios, what is a better alternative for making a professional digital portfolio? Love Nico and all you guys do for the art world. <laughs> anybody? Portfolio? Anybody? Uh, I don't know. Like it's tough because any any job I've got like since you know we finished school or whatever, I think the most important thing is to, I mean, if you go to school or if you have whatever connections you have, like pretty much any job I got was through people I knew. Um, so I think it's important to like keep your work up to date. And I don't think it matters that much what we use as an online portfolio, if it's Instagram or if it's, I mean, I use ArtStation. If you want to make your own website. I mean, I think really all that matters is that you keep making new stuff i mean what do you guys think yeah i think um i mean from from the perspective of actually 
in the past where I've actually hired artists based off their Instagram um, accounts, um, one of the things I realized is that when, you know, if, if, if you're, say, a, a studio person and you're looking for talent, and you're going to go to Instagram because it's such a great resource, I think, for for finding, you know, art, it's probably the, the best one. That when you're going through, um, you know, so visual development artists uh, work and stuff like that, you know, if you see something you like, you're probably going to save it. And then at some point you might go to the, that person and hire them. But the reason why I think people will stand out on Instagram and why they build a big following is they have a certain consistency to their posts and their style. So for example, one of the things we were told at school is that it's really good to be able to draw in any style, right? But yet, if you go to an Instagram account where that artist <laughs> yeah, is drawing, that. Like, it's a bit, if you go to an Instagram account where, where people are drawing in 20 different styles, it's so kind of inconsistent. You don't really know what that person does. And, and you know, here they've got like a really flat UPA style and they've got like a fully painted style. And it's, it's great they can do that, but actually the best Instagram accounts and the ones that to me seem to have the most followers is, is extremely consistent. And that's usually a balance between personal work and um, professional work, but always within the same kind of style. And the way that the posts are presented is also important. Like it, you know, it's, it's almost like there's an art to the way you present your artwork as well. And if you get that balance right, where you have this beautiful, not just work, but you, your whole you know, Instagram page looks awesome. That's the thing that grabs the attention amongst the sea of thousands of other artists. And it those are the beautiful. Make people yeah. I love it. Uh, if you're going to Instagram to hire someone, I think you're going to their Instagram page for their style. If you're yeah. the kind of person that can Absolutely. do many different styles, that's probably the person that you're going to get hired by submitting your portfolio to a studio because you want to get a studio job with someone who can do a range of styles that isn't going to be hired for their style can be hired so that they can do other people's style so it's a different you gotta know what you want yeah but and and to your point there's different ways to get jobs right and like you could be the kind of person that's almost like the bones of a studio can do virtually anything environment styles whatever super versatile and they will want to probably keep you there forever but you, will you be the standout kind of artist in the projects that you work on i have my doubts mm. but at the same time of course you could probably find um an example uh, an outlier with everything that we say <laughs> even right oh yeah sure. you know like Vouter tulp he is mm. a complete chameleon he can do you know, from Carter Goodrich to like impressionist sergeant to like whatever. He can do the whole gamut of styles. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 But like, yeah, like you say, it's, it's, you can, you, that doesn't hurt your career for sure. I think having the versatility and, and, and to be honest, a good artist should be able to draw from Disney all the way down to, you know, something, something very simple, like a more graphic, you know, 2D cartoon, um, flat style sort of 2D cartoon. But, yeah, I think it's it's going back to what we said earlier. If you focus on what you love and what you're particularly good at, you kind of develop a style that people can see one of your pieces of art and they know who drew it. Then I think you've, you've got it down, like uh, you know Mike Mignola, Bobby Chu, Chaos Adair. <laughs> you know, all you guys like you know you see your work in gym as well. Like when you see your work, it's like very very distinctive, and it's and and that's what I think people are kind of. Uh, coming to you for right and then you know you, you make a name for yourself based off that you know what i like <sighs> i like the whole entire idea of um really putting your stamp on something if you create something a whole new style whatever you like it do it a buttload of more like a buttload of times until people really recognize it as yours mm. right put your stamp on it before moving on to something else uh, yeah. that's a really good way I think of like being able to expand on what you do you know because like we think about just fine artists they go through these stages right it's like impressionist cubist whatever it is that they're into at that time um, yet all of their shows and the pieces and stuff 
uh, we all related to that one person. Like Picasso goes through, yeah. you know, the blue period and cubism and plates, you know, <laughs> <laughs> things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a great example of someone who doesn't have one style. He's known for a certain style when you think of him. But yeah. if you look at his work, it's like, goes all over the place and that is interesting too because it's like for him it's like or for certain artists they go through periods mm. right and you really love that period but they don't do that anymore i wonder like how do you kind of feel about that you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it would be strange they, they, they move on to something you're like man i wish they went back to doing that other thing yeah is that the same with our generation and 2d and 3d right like 3d came along when we all just came out of college and just wiped out 2d which we all were completely passionately in love with it's it's so we kind of experienced that well or or just like you know um what's a good example i'm trying to think of a good example uh oh shoot what's his name the one that does all the I think he did like Ren and Stimpy backgrounds back oh, in the John, day. Oh, John John K? No. No, no. Oh, um Bill something. Yeah, William that. his his William like Ray. fine artist name yeah. is William whatever and then William he, Ray. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Bill Ray, yeah. Right? That's a I think that's a perfect example. I don't know if he still does the cartoony beautiful style that he used to do. Because, like, yeah. so much of his style now is, like, plainer paintings. But it's like, yeah. I would love to see him go back to, like, the would, animated stuff. I wonder, yeah. I wonder if, you know, because that style was, was ripped off so much, you know, over the years. I just wonder if he kind of moved on and just was kind of like, he wanted to start something new. Just fed up. <laughs> you know they're bringing that show back, right? I heard there was like backlash. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, because it's without John Kay. It's like, what? I don't know. I, I you know. Uh, you know, I don't think Adam knows about John Kay. Oh, yeah. No, no. I, no, I'm just saying, like, that's, but you still, despite, you know, everything, you know, that happened, it's, it, it came from his brain. And, and to try and redo it with, with someone, it's very unlikely they can pull it off, I think. I feel like they should have just. <laughs> I don't know the whole entire story with John Kay, so I won't pretend I do. I, I, I don't know what he did or whatever, but I, I heard it wasn't good. Uh, <laughs> bad reputation. Went to Sheridan, went to our old college. Mm -hmm. The same college as us. Very different year. We didn't know him. Um, but at the same time, I, I kind of feel like this one should have just kind of been left alone. You know, just yeah. let it just be there but as its, its original thing and leave it alone. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's like, you, you get why the studios will, will go for something like that, you know? It's, it's yeah. they, they're like, okay, we release this, like, it's, they're, essentially, they're, they're all kind of like gambling, and they're like, this is a safe bet, you know, we know this got a huge audience, but... But, like, oil companies could be a safe bet, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that doesn't yeah. mean that we invest in oil companies. Yeah, but, it, but the same way, that safe bet can have just as equal backlash from number one by getting a huge backlash of fans before you even made the show which is what's happened in this instance mm -hmm. and the second thing if they don't pull it off then it was more risky than going for a completely original idea so it's like it seems on the surface like a safe bet but actually it, it, it could be devastating you know it's 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 interesting like time will the, tell the, the way time will tell <laughs> yeah yeah the one i'm really interested in coming back is avatar are you guys with oh, me yeah. huh? what? Uh, i didn't know that was coming, you know back. That was coming back isn't it i thought i saw it on netflix <laughs> or something like plans maybe some announcements maybe i don't yeah, know yeah I, I didn't i didn't see that and i don't work for netflix so i don't know so you gotta oh. look it up yourself but that would be amazing i thought yeah, I, I, cool. I i wish i had you know how joe rogan has a guy to look up stuff on online that's what you yeah, look look that stuff up i wish i yeah, you need that guy yeah I, you need, I need a guy like that the researcher <laughs> just in the background you never see his face you're just like yelling at him to do stuff or, yeah, that you, would can, be well, you can ask alexa to do that you know like she, 
she's got way more skills than we we use oh. that for than just playing music. <laughs> Alexa, Siri, I don't even like saying their names because like it's know, so creepy. Yeah. All my devices will start turning on. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it all starts, man. That's how it all starts. <laughs> this is awesome. But let's go to another question, shall we? So um, this one's from Anonymous. Anonymous asks, have you guys had doubts that, uh, and you could ask your questions here, have you guys had doubts that you won't become professional artists or the show won't be successful? Wow. Any advice on trusting yourself or staying positive? Did you have any doubts about the show? Did you have any doubts? You yeah, always have with, doubts. I mean, yeah. You know, but you, you know, what, what, what it, where are you going to go if, if you doubt everything you do in any anything that you try and do, right? You know, I didn't yeah. have any doubts. I did, I, but I, then I didn't have like, oh, for sure, this is going to happen. I didn't have yeah. any of that. I just had my objective, you mm -hmm. know, which is like, okay, got to try to do this. Got to try to do this. Got to try to do this. Will it work? I didn't even really think about it. Yeah, I think yeah. The, like before it comes out, the excitement of like, this is going to be great. You know, it's kind of like uh, it's that feeling you get when you're like building a sandcastle and you're like, I don't know how this is going to turn out. You don't really think about like the waves coming in and crashing it down before yeah. you finish it. You're We're just, just thinking, having fun. It's going to be so cool when it's done. Totally. Yeah. What a good energy that, you know, and and that actually is kind of interesting because like you see this happen with like the most original content all the time where like these people they didn't have any idea that would blow up to this level um you know taiko waititi and was the uh the vampire show that he oh made. What, what we do in the shadows yeah nobody yeah. had any idea that that would have its that success things mm. like that it's just like yeah these very genuine reasons very pure reasons to do whatever show right uh yeah that's so much easier or music it's so much easier in the very beginning and then there's the pressure then there's the expectations then there's all these other things once you maybe touch that ring of success for a second you know what i mean and yeah do you feel like it's hard to get back to that? To get back to that to that that mindset of when that you're innocent, more starting out. Pure, yeah. yeah, mindset, right? For me, it's like that's all I want to do. Like anything, you know, like the stuff we're working on nowadays, the top secret stuff we can't really talk about. But like, it, you get that feeling like this is something that you know i just I, I have no idea like what's gonna happen when it comes out i'm not even i don't even care all i want is the feeling of like whatever i'm working on is kind of different and exciting and um i don't really know what's gonna happen i don't know how it's gonna turn out i'm kind of an idea but it's just fun to work on really yeah i i have this like analogy which which i was i was talking to someone about the other day and when i was probably in the early years of Sheridan. If you asked me what my ambition was then, I was like, I want to be a film director, right? I was like, I want to, I'm going to direct films. And I, it was, no one was going to change my mind. I was like, so adamant that was going to happen. Um, and whether that kind of happens or not, like, you know, I've directed some, some shorter stuff, obviously n no features as yet, but let's just fast forward like five, 10 years into the future, right? Let's say um, I get my first movie and i'm like working on the set and i care so much about it wanting to be good that i'm like stressed out right like you know every day i'm like you know trying to do so much trying to control so much of the process and like you know you, you've got some bad weather coming in it's affecting the shoot and nothing's going how you want and like you know the actors are like playing up and you you've you've created this dream opportunity for yourself but it just didn't happen how you imagined it in your head because you have this kind of like perfect you know scenario that you kind of envision so now what I, what I try and do, because, you know, like, like we talked about earlier with COVID, you just don't know what's around the corner. So now what I try and do is focus more on, like Jim saying, the feeling that you want to get from the job you're doing. So I was like, okay, what do I love? I love working with awesome people. I love working with friends. I love working on projects that you get passionate about. 
and um, you know, and working with talent that are going to kind of push and push each other. And that's exactly what we did with Nico, and it found its way to success because of that. And it's, I think it's the same thing. It's like you, focusing too much on an outcome is is where it gets like tricky. But if you focus just on how how you want to feel in the job, it it kind of life sort of opens up for you. Do you mean like do you mean you're, you're agreeing with a direct live action movie, like a live action movie? Yeah, or a, or a feature animation, anything, right? Like, I, wait, I originally I always wanted to direct live action, whereas whereas now I'm like, that's a crazy crazy job, right? Like going on shoots for like five months at a time in these crazy conditions, you know? It's it's when you actually look at what directors have to go through. Like George Lucas almost had a heart attack. He was in hospital twice during the filming of Star Wars because he cared so much about that movie. And you're like. You know, there's 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 a, a idea of what it's like, and there's the reality, and it's like, it's uh, for me, it's kind of interesting to try and really think about what you want out of life, not where you this picture of where you where you kind of uh, you know think you want to go, and then when you get there, you're like, oh, I didn't want this, I didn't want this. <laughs> well, when you think the- about it, it's yeah, like, it's right. how long does a uh, animated film take to to come out versus a live action film? Live action film comes out so much quicker. It's done so yeah. much quicker than a than an animated film. So something has to give, and that thing that gives is like timing. You have to be like, we're losing the light. Let's organize these freaking hundred people to come together, do what they need to do to get this one friggin' shot, or we're gonna fly over these you know, planes that are going to be doing something in the air at that time. And we need to capture it, capture that shot with an actor on the ground that reacts to those planes and blah, blah, blah. And by the way, <laughs> the aliens that the planes are fighting, those aren't real, but you need to have that timing down too. It's like, oh, but then the harness broke on this thing. What do we do now? We don't have a second harness. And then all this like quick, quick thinking of like, how do we get this together? How do we piece this together? All right, let me cut the seat belt in my car i'm gonna tie it up make you a harness boom action right like i would be good at this probably i think <laughs> it's funny though too like when you think about like doing certain things like you know like sort of the the idea of being a director is one thing but then like the actual job of it is is way different than like you, you know what i mean like it's it's never going to be what you thought going in so you got to kind of be uh kind of like careful or you know research what is you like if you really want to do something if it's your dream to do it i think it's more important to research like what is it like day to day is that like even mm-hmm. really something you want to do because like i remember my dream coming out of school was to be a character designer and then i got i got a job as a character designer i was like oh man this is so cool i mean they're gonna be like jim what do you th- let's get your take on these characters and like you know it's gonna be so fun and like i go in there and it's like okay we need you to do like 400 mouse charts it's like it was not at all what i thought it was gonna be you know well you you just gotta craft it into yeah same kind of thing i don't like to do turnarounds i just like to do the fun stuff uh of coming up with that idea that affects the movie you know um so i just say no (laughs) <laughs> but, yeah. but you did that back in the day right bob like back back when you were starting out you kind of go, go well that's the jobs. thing for me back in the day when i started it's not like i was working with people that knew me yeah i was being discovered who is this guy there's not even a picture of him he's on is he's in the ether he's on the, you know he's in the internet now, this is still like before Facebook, you know, so you got to like, put that context on it, too. It's like magical, mythological, digital kind of character that we're going to be working with. That's kind of intriguing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I didn't have to work for that as much as like if I was working for studios in Toronto. Because mm-hmm. they're going to be first thing they're going to say is like, anybody know this guy? You went to Sheridan. Do you know this guy? You probably graduated. Like I heard those conversations when I was in the room, um, and they're talking about somebody that they're going to bring on, right? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then in my case, nobody knew who I was because I was in my own little bubble in Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually been one, and uh, one job with a friend, a mutual friend of ours, when. You know, when I got my name up there and stuff, Matt Lyon, he Mm -hmm. hired me for a job, right? He hired me for a job and I was like, I don't have time. And he's like, man, can you please, I I just, you know, I want you on this project. Uh, I'm going to embellish, probably. He was begging me, he was grabbing my leg and he was begging me, crying a little bit, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just joking. But um, then I said to him, okay, you know what? I'll do the job, but no revisions. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, I don't want any revisions. And he was like, so, uh, and he was like, let me just get this straight. And I was like, okay, so this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna read your script. I'm gonna do my take on the character. I'm gonna give it to you. And then I'm gonna say goodbye. <laughs> you know, pretty much it. <laughs> like no revisions. And he was like, all right, sure. Let's see what you do. You know? So not only did I not have to do turnarounds or, like, expressions. Isn't that funny? I didn't yeah. have to do any Well, yeah, that's it. You're, you're, you're doing exactly that. You're, like, focusing on what you loved, and, and you've done that ever since, right? But, of course, you can't start off like that. In the no. beginning, I was the yes man. You, can you do this? Yes, yes, yes. Can you do this as well? Yes, 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 of course. You know, it's like, it didn't matter. Yeah. So you when can't, you, when you can't you start have off. to say no, like when you either don't have enough time or you don't really want to take a job and they really want you to, it's an interesting scenario, right? Yeah. So with those kind of things, I don't know about you guys, but I always make it a point to have it, do it in such a way that, um, that we can, there's still a next step there's a reason for us to connect again, right? So it's not just, no, not a good time. It's like, no, it's not a good time, but can I add you, I'm making a tiny little list of the people that I would love to work with next. Can I put you on this list? I go, yes. I go, okay, I'll email you. Um, And then generally how it works, I say how it works to indicate like, this is the regular, this is how things work. I've done this a bunch of times. How this works is I'm gonna send out that email to my very exclusive little list of the people I'd love to work with next uh, when I'm free. And if, you, if you're if you free at that time, email me back, you know, and, uh, and then I'll do the job. Yeah. And because they know that they are in a list they feel special. They are special. The list is small, mm. but also I'm more special because it's my list. I'm sorry, but that's how it kind of works, right? And so when they get the email, then they'll be like, "Let's email him back right away." Yeah, and I've gotten great. emails. I shit you not, where they had zero jobs for me, and they emailed me anyways. We'll figure it out. Get him on here first. Nice. So yeah. getting offers for nothing create the demand yeah right it's just like that's how they that's how you know studios are the other way around Mm -hmm. yeah you know they got all these choices i love when uh when when you get people they want to uh they want to or they want to hire you for a job and it's almost like they they won't they they'll almost have you starting working before they'll say like okay, here's how much, you know, we're, they don't want to talk about like how much you get paid or anything. They're just like, okay, so let's, let's get going. <laughs> have you ever had that? Where it's just like, they don't even tell you like if they have a budget or how much they're just like, okay, here's the project. Let's have a, read the script. Let's have a six hour meeting. Let's do this. Let's do that. It's like, wait a second. <laughs> what are we doing here? I've, yeah, I've had that before. I've had that before. I shut it down pretty quick. <laughs> Got you. I mean, otherwise you're just wasting time. And then, and then you, a lot of the time with those kind of things, you'll find that it's like, it's like, it's an insulting, low Bad amount budget. of money. Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely see that too. And nowadays, <laughs> if there's any red, red flags, 
I'm out of there so quick. Yeah. There was a job that contacted, and you know, like, I want to, I want to preface that it's, it's crazy important to be that person that can do those things in the beginning, right? And say yes to things in the beginning. But there is a point, as we know, where you, you're getting the demand. So you got to learn to say no. Mm-hmm. And you got to be more selective. There is that point where you have to switch gears or else you're, what's going to happen? You're just going to say yes to too many things, do a really crappy job at them. And then all of those offers are going to go away. Yeah. Plus your health can get affected too, right? Like, I, you know, I've been through, definitely been through times where I've taken on so many jobs that I was like, not hardly sleeping. And you can do that in your 20s and stuff, right? But then life catches up with you at some point. When was the last time you did an all nighter? <laughs> for, for work? Um, yeah. I asked Jim this the other day, but he said, nope, I don't even remember. Not doing it. Yeah. It's been a while since having kids. It kind of, it kind of, I've definitely had some like three three a.m. kind of like sessions, but uh, yeah, all night at maybe not since Nico days, I would say. You know what? Like I'm like, years. eating so healthy now. I have so much energy. Like I totally. Yeah. Like yesterday, I went to sleep at two thirty. Got up at seven. No alarm. Yeah. yeah so it, I'm it, like getting so much used to like being able to do it all night or whatever yeah it's amazing when you lighten the load on your digestion how yeah. your body gives you all the energy it was using to digest your food it goes into your um yeah your physical like energy levels just completely yeah shift. i just tried to get every rid of everything that brings inflammation yeah. you know so sugars uh rice flour bread noodles all the good yeah. stuff. All the yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Tasty stuff. Yeah. yeah. I got stuff to do though. Um, yeah. Cool. Let's burn through a couple more of these uh, questions, shall we? And yeah. then call it a day. So we got Noah over here. She asks, uh, last season, hey Noah, by the way, uh, last season ended in such a wonderful way with, with the taste for more. Do you have plans of showing more of Nico's world in some way in the future? So, well, that's one of the reasons why we brought the app back, right? Like, yes. to kind of continue the journey. <laughs> yeah, that's, and it's cool because, like you said, once we inked that deal with Amazon to create the show, we pretty much took the app off. Uh, yeah. Pretty much right after. So, yeah. not a lot of people have seen this app. Go get it. iPhone, iPads, not Android, but iPhone, iPads. Um, and it's for free. Do we have any plans on Android? Probably not, right? Uh, yeah, no. In fact, Android is, is is a very straightforward thing to do, um, provided you know people like the app. Then we can we can definitely port to that uh, next Beautiful. step. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, in terms of the show, we can say that you know the show has not been officially canceled, but Amazon is no longer making kids shows, so the show's in a weird kind of limbo you know and if that changes in the future we don't know but for now you know we're gonna we're gonna wait and see (laughs) yeah so that part really stinks because i think you you mentioned one time to me that they said that this was one of the more popular shows yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. it's it's just you know they they they, they, i think it was just a decision of looking at their main audience and realizing they were all 18 to 35 years old so they were like let's make shows for them really (laughs) oh my god stop making kids no but they had oh that's such a shame because like they had a bunch of emmy winning shows like uh the tumble leaf thingy yeah tumble leaf uh the the road to oz was it the road to oz yeah was the worst thing um yeah obviously nico and then a couple of other preschool ones um yeah no but it's just you know like jim says you never know someone else comes comes on board and it's like oh man you know we had some good stuff here let's revamp it you never know nico might make an appearance it's a weird it's a weird thing you never really expect for like a network essentially to just say like we're just not going to make a certain type of show anymore (laughs) it's so weird 
it's yeah. strategy, I guess. But I again, it all comes back to that unexpected journey, right? That we started yeah. off talking about. You just, you never know what's coming. Yeah, somebody was saying, did you guys ever pitch Nico to Netflix? I think Netflix likely would have green lighted the, a third season. So the thing about that is, um, you know, Amazon spent a lot of money and resources and time to develop with us the show. Hmm. So rightfully so, they do own a part of the show, a nice a nice good chunk of the show without their resources without their everything uh that show never would have been a show mm. so it gets a little yeah. tougher we can't take the show to netflix they're a competitor it's, it's yeah that. yeah it's a shame <clears throat> but although amazon uh, are actively trying to sell their shows to other um distributors across across the world so you know broadcast <laughs> yeah oh, broadcasters okay. yeah across across in south america or in europe so um, that's definitely a possibility. It could it could have find a new audience that way. But of course, the real possibility <laughs> is today, and you can download this app today. So go get it today, right now, uh, because this stream is pretty much done. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time, and I got a bunch of stuff to do as well. So, any last um, thoughts? Any last words for the audience? Uh, yeah, I think from, from everything we said, it's it's all, it's all about the journey, right? You got to enjoy the journey, not focus too much on the outcome. And the second thing is, yeah, you guys, uh, we'd love it if you can download and, and rate the app for us. It really helped get some more exposure uh, for the Nico app on the App Store. Fantastic. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks everybody for tuning in, and uh, we will catch you next time. Peace out. Cool. We're done.